Easy, easy, buddy. Hades, Hades. Ah. Hey, what's going on guys? And welcome back to the coolest dog training channel right here on YouTube. I'm Tom Davis, America's Canine Educator. Thank you for joining me. If you have a dog that is reactive, pulls on the leash, barking hysterically and habitually at all dogs and everything in the car, in the house, this video is for you. Today we have another German Shepherd, go figure, into our warden train. Um, program. His name is Hades. He's around a year old. He has what we would call severe dog reactivity. I haven't worked with him yet. Um, we wanted to film you guys the whole process so you guys know how to know what it is as well as step by step know how to fix it at home. So today we're going to be we're going to be rotating in other dogs, uh, different dogs, different breeds, um, different temperaments to see how he reacts. Now he's really great with people. It's just dogs. So today I'm going to walk you through the process. Here we go. All right guys, so we're starting off with the slip collar because it's just the collar that we start off with. Um, we got another dog around here and I'm going to walk you through the process, but I figured it'd be nice to just tell you what we have for a setup. We have a safety clip, of course, um, which I'll explain in a minute how to put that on and why that is important. Uh, and then we have just a basic slip collar, dominant dog collar on him. Um, judging by his size and his strength, um, we might have to move to different collars, but um, we're going to see how he does. Okay, break. All right, Kyle, you want to just come right towards me? You can hear his, you can hear his throat, his trachea, his larynx um, having that pressure. Easy, easy, buddy. That hurt. Um, obviously he's <laughs> very strong. Um, so this collar is not gonna be safe for him or me. So I'm gonna switch to uh, Herm Springer. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with prong collars, um, it makes what you just saw not happen. So the amount of control, <sighs> my Oh, that, that hurt. So you guys give me a couple seconds of your time. I need your help to raise money for nonprofit dog organizations. This could be shelters, rescue groups, foster organizations, anybody that's out there that needs funding and needs assistance, that they're donating their time. I want to raise money, but I need your help. All right, guys, so here's my plan for us to raise money for these people. We have a ton of people watching our videos, getting educated, learning from each other. The comments are just full of positivity. You guys are the absolute best. The community we've created on my channel is, is amazing and I'm so excited. And so for all of my new people watching, if you guys have not subscribed to my channel, here's how you can help me raise money. All you guys have to do is like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and leave a comment in the comments below with the text new so I know who's new. Every single new subscriber, so you guys watching right now and you're not subscribed, if you subscribe, and do all of the things I just said. I'm gonna give 25 cents for every new subscriber that we get in this video to donate to an organization that needs help or needs funding. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check those new subscribers in the comments and the likes, and if they correlate, for every single person that does this, I'm gonna donate 25 cents per person. Now don't worry, if you're already a subscriber, you guys know I love you, I appreciate you very much, and what you guys can do is spread this video, share it on Facebook groups, Instagram, screenshot this, share it, share it, share it, and for, again, every single new subscriber that likes, subscribes to my channel, leaves the word new in the comments below, I'm gonna donate 25 cents to an organization across the country that needs help in relation of gaining some sort of funding for their dog nonprofit. So something new, I wanted to give back. This is my first attempt at doing that. Let's raise some money, guys. I think that this is gonna be fantastic. I, I hope. The amount of control that I have with him is minimal. Even if he knew obedience, it's a currency thing. He's more stimulated by that dog than he is interested in listening to me. So it comes down to, hey buddy, I know what you want. I can feel you pulling on me, but I'm gonna go after that dog anyway, or I'm gonna go chasing that dog anyway. That's not good. The more I allow him to do that, the more he's enabled to do whatever he wants. So I'm gonna switch to a Herm Springer. This is a 3.0, I'll leave the link in the description below. So it's gonna go on and it's gonna go right behind his ears. So it fits nice and beautifully right there. Then what I'm gonna do guys, and by the way, this is my new signature, no bad dog leash. It's half inch, four foot biothane. It's what I use, it says no bad dogs right on it. It's what I use in all my dog training and 
It's great because you can run sanitizer right through it and it's not gonna hurt it like it would with leather. So I'm gonna clip the clip right onto the prong and then I'm gonna take my safety clip, which is right on the actual leash, and then I'm gonna put it on his flat collar. So for whatever reason, if this busted off, like he, you just saw him make me bust my butt, um, you still have an attachment to him. So now what I'm gonna do is when he does that, I'm gonna correct him for pulling. It's not acceptable, it's creating a lot of problems for him at home. His owners are very uh, fed up with it and I don't blame them, he's huge, he just dragged me down. So I'm gonna have Kyle, um, why don't you just walk back and forth this way and I'm gonna work on leash pressure with Hades just to let him know, hey buddy, you gotta pay attention to me, not the other dog. So this is the first time we're doing it with him um, and you guys are watching it for the first time and I'm gonna do my best to walk you through step by step of what I'm doing. So he, he does know a little bit of leash pressure, just so you guys know. So when I say heel, he knows to turn with me. So he's engaged, you guys are watching. Watch his tail, watch his ears. He's on this dog, he's on this dog. He's getting ready, he's getting ready. Hades, heel. You guys saw that quick pop. I'm gonna turn again. Hades, heel. Quick pop, go back. Just feathered in lightly, Kyle. Good, we'll come back over here, good. Hades, heel. Yes, good boy. Well done. Now that was absolutely perfect, guys. What you just saw was I said, Hades heel. He's like, screw you, dude. I'm going after this dog. I, co I corrected him with the prong. He goes, well, okay, I'm gonna come with you then. And then the second time I did the same thing, I said, Hades heel verbally, verbal cue. And I turned and he complied beautifully. So what that means, guys, is just do it right the first time. I'm not using food. I'm using, I'm using positive reinforcement, but I'm not fumbling around with my food pouch and I'm looking for all these things. I'm just being very assertive. assertive assertive and I'm teaching him what he can and can't do very clearly. If you don't listen to me, you're gonna get punished. And what, so what this does guys, as they continue to walk forward, is, is it counter conditions the problems that we're having. So when I come out like this, go ahead Kyle, cut that way. So when I come out like this, Hades heel. Yes, good boy, good heel. Hades heel, yes. Hades, sit, absolutely perfect, good boy. Ah, uh -uh. sit, good. So I'm using a lot of my verbal cues just to voice inflection. So it's punishment. Punishment comes and rewards comes, reward and punishment comes in so many different flavors. I, I think people just revert to punishment, meaning complete and utter harm to the dog. Punishment is, is when he got up there, I said, ah, I gave him a verbal punishment of like, nope, that's not okay. That's voice inflection. He knew that he did something wrong. He went back into a sit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue to work him around Bear, which is our another board and train. And then we're gonna switch up to another German Shepherd that's semi-reactive J, which you guys saw in my last German Shepherd video. And um, we're gonna see if the dynamic changes to walk you through another situation. Um, all right guys, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you a really easy exercise like I've done a lot of my videos just to gain control over him and get him engaged with me. The problem with a lot of people is when they go out with their dog, the dog has no control. As you saw in the beginning, he was flying at the end of the leash, pulling me down. I'm a 165 pound dude and he's pulling me down with no problem. You have to gain some sort of obedience. So here's one thing you guys can start doing to make sure that this is gonna be scalable over the future and make sure that it lasts. It's engagement back and forth. So let me show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna ask him to turn. Hades heel, little pop. Hades heel, yes, good. So getting him engaged with me guys is the name of the game. Hades heel, good. So watch when I turn. Hades heel, verbal, yes, good heel. Telling him good job. Hades heel, yes, good. Hades sit, good sit buddy, good. So what that does guys is when another dog comes out, instead of s focusing so much on stop barking, stop barking, stop barking, because it's very instinctual, it's very primitive, it's very primal for a dog to go, hey, who's that, who's in my neighborhood? And the dog to react that way. It's not appropriate, but it's a little bit more primal, primal than uh, doing the engagement that I'm doing. So what I'm doing is I'm gaining his attention to say, hey, let's go this way, hey, let's go that way. So that way when you're out guys, you're able to disengage the dog off of the other dog with, act with an actual command instead of just expecting him to stop barking out of nowhere. So it's a little bit more realistic and it sets you guys up for success. One thing too, huge, when you guys are working on this at home, don't go out and work on this unless your basic obedience is good. Your heel has to be good, your brake has to be good, your engagement, just like I just taught you guys here, has to be good. So if you're turning with your dog and they're like not paying attention, they're off into the distance, don't try this yet. This is the last step. 
So preliminary and proactively doing your engagement to make sure your dog is turning on you with the verbal. Am I being mean? Am I being um, too militant? Absolutely not. I love dogs more than anything. And I need to make sure that when I'm out with this dog, he's not gonna pull his owners down just like he just did with me because essentially that will end up him in a shelter that or worse. Giving your dog consequence and giving your dog some sort of discipline for very inappropriate, life-changing, life-altering, life-sentencing uh, behaviors like this big dude is the most humane thing you can do with a dog. If you're allowing them to just kind of realize that, oh, what they're doing isn't a big deal and you don't really care and you're ignoring it and you're dancing around the other dog with food and the dog's reacting like crazy and it's an absolute just mess, that is enabling and that is inhumane to do to a dog. Be assertive, be clear. That's not okay, this is. We brought another dog out to German Shepherd Jay, which you guys saw in my last video. This is huge because a lot of people are uneducated about the prong and if we come down here i just want to show you hi buddy that this prong is going to evenly distribute pressure to the dog all the way around the dog's neck not down on his throat the slip collar was on his throat the flat collar is on his throat the harness tells the dog to pull so the prong collar is one of the safest tools you can use on a dog to clearly communicate to him what he's doing is wrong so one thing that a lot of people think is is these prongs are sharp and when the dog pulls against it it's correcting or hurting the dog that couldn't be further from the truth because a lot of people just don't know what these tools are used for and they don't know uh, how to use them and so i understand and that's my goal and that's my whole thing here guys is just to educate and help you guys out at home um, so if you guys haven't yet, don't forget, like this video, subscribe to my channel. We're doing an awesome giveaway to raise money this, this uh, episode, which I'm really excited about. Um, so I'm going to let him go and I'm not going to correct him, which means I'm not going to take the prong and actually pop him, which, which is what creates the, the actual correction to happen. I'm going to show you guys, he can actually pull all the way through this prong and he won't care at all because it's not the prong that he runs into that creates the conflict or the aversive correction. It's me as the handler. And many people just don't know how to use the prong, which is two things. It's either gonna be ineffective, you're gonna put it up, because it's not fit right, and you're using a really chintzy model that doesn't work. And other people are putting it on, assuming that when the dog pulls against the prong, it's gonna fix the problem. And a lot of people are wrong by that, and then they you know, shelf it. So I'm gonna show you, he's gonna pull through this prong more than likely and he's not gonna care about the prong. Then I'm gonna actually correct the dog properly and show you the difference. So you guys see, he's pulling right, right through this prong. Doesn't care about the prong. It's not the, it's not the prong that's, that's making him stop. It's giving me a little bit more help, but as you can see, I'm gonna let this play out. I want you guys to just realize. So watch the effective correction I'm about to distribute to him. Hades, heal. Heel. Heel. Ah. Sit. Heel. Hades, heel. Heel. Hades, sit. Good. My goal is to just educate. So many times, companies, facilities, countries, organizations, shelters are banning these tools because they just simply don't know what they are and i hope this video shows you exactly what they mean and what they can do for a dog i've worked and volunteered my i've dedicated my whole adult career the last 13 years of my life dedicated to animals congratulations to these guys who won the three face masks in our last giveaway video so my goal right here guys is to simply just get hades around jay and we're just going to be healing him around and so you guys can watch the process of us getting close to each other for the first time and my goal is isn't for him not to be interested in the dog that's not fair and realistic my goal is is to take him from the disastrous mess that he was 20 minutes ago to a calmer dog around other dogs he doesn't need new friends he doesn't want new friends he's a little bit of lungy still heal but no vocalization so really minimalizing the reactivity and the stimulation Hades, heal. Yes, buddy, well done. And as you guys remember, Jay from last time was in the same boat Hades was last week. So this is great progression for both of them. So again, guys, I think too many people also get conflicted on, he's looking. That's okay if he's looking. He's not barking, he's not reacting, he's in a sit, he's doing really well. So what you guys can do at home is simply verbal reward. So I'm gonna show you all you need to do to the dog. Again, no treats, no balls, um, none of that stuff. Hades heel, good heel. Positive reinforcement. Hades heel, positive reinforcement, good. Hades heel, yes, good. Hades heel, 
Yes, good. All right, now Kyle, we're gonna uh, just get a little closer here. Good. So both of the dogs are gonna get a little grumbly as we get closer. So Kyle, why don't you take a step back and follow us? So Jay is gonna get a little bit more reactive because Hades is behind him. So we're gonna switch this and why don't you just walk directly next to me instead of either of them being behind each other. Hades heel. So this guy's I'm just gonna leave it, give him a little correction. Hades heel. Ah, yes, good heel, good decision, good. Heel. Good, I'm trying to leave in as much as I can for you guys at home to see the realness of this. Hades heel. Good, good boy, heel. So you guys saw that correction? Quick snap, just to snap him out of it. So it's, it's skillfully handling as well as, again, like a four foot biothane leash will really help you guys because it's the proper amount of distance. Ah, uh ah, -uh, down. It's the proper amount of distance between you and the dog. Um, you don't want to have six feet, that's too much. You don't want to have less than four. That's why we created this uh, leash for you guys to say, hey, I want everything that you're working with because I want to be successful. You got the leash, you got the Herm Springer set up, and you got the safety clip. So all of this coming into play creates the good situation. So um, what, what happens here, guys, as Kyle continues to heal around with Jay, which was also really reactive, you guys saw him last week. Um, what's happening? Why is this happening? Why are you guys getting um, this success, and why are you guys... Um, breaking through well the reality is guys is you either are correcting behavior you don't like to diminish it and to discourage it from happening or you're beating around the bush and you're trying to figure out a way of like and and i'm just i'm just being real i'm not bashing i'm not trying to be negative i'm just being real that this is the reality being very assertive and just telling the dog when they're doing something wrong and correcting them effectively and efficiently like bam right there no more of this um and one thing I will mention is this is reactivity. Both of these dogs are reactive. If this dog actually wanted to eat this other dog, it would take weeks and weeks and weeks to get to the process um, of really overcoming the situation. When a dog's reactive, they're just taking a situation and they're becoming frustrated on the leash. They're like, let me go, let me go investigate. And I'm saying no, they're barking, they're pulling, they have no control, the obedience is whack and so on and so forth. So um, this is reactivity. This is fear-based, unsocialized reactivity. This isn't real aggression. If this was real aggression and the dog actually wanted to hurt each other, it would be a different, a little bit of different approach and it would certainly be not as easy as it looks. All right, guys, that's a wrap for today. Thank you so much for watching. Hades, you're doing a lot better, buddy. I'm excited to see this guy's progress. Don't forget, guys, let's raise some freaking money for people who need it. If you're new here and you're watching this, subscribe to my channel, like this video, leave a comment in the comments below, type out new and let me know you guys are new to my channel. And for every single comment, for every new, single new subscriber, we're gonna be donating 25 cents. We wanna grow the movement, we wanna grow the channel, we wanna help dogs. You guys are the absolute best. Thank you so much for watching. Hades, you've done good, my friend. I will talk to you guys next time. Peace.